gun violence in schools. Within the last two months, where there were nearly 100 incidents in schools, and that's according to the National Association of School Resource Officers. Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey is retired from the LAPD. She joins us now with more insight on school violence. Thanks so much for being with us today, Sergeant. Do you think that this recent violence could stem from the pandemic? Well, you know, according to what I've read, they believe that these young people are experiencing a little bit of anxiety. They've not been socialized in almost two years uh, since they've been on a campus and, and interacted with other children. And so that plays a part in this. And I think it's very important that school administrators and school resource officers and the agencies who put them on campuses are more <coughs> proactive rather than waiting to be reactive to whatever is going to come. What about violence as a result of bullying? Because we hear a lot about that these days as well. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a problem. But listen, you know, it, these kids, they handle things very differently from the way they did when I was growing up. You know, you have a beef with somebody, you, you knuckle <laughs> up. These kids are bringing guns to school and they're settling fights uh, with guns and knives and other weapons. And so while, uh, you know, gun violence is up and bullying is a problem and a part of it, I think also it's very important to send a clear and definitive message that there will be zero tolerance for any foolishness on any campus. These children have to understand accountability. But what about the solution? Because we know a group of dads in Louisiana are working to prevent fights in schools. Does it mean parents now are the answer to preventing this violence? Well, it's a part of it, and I, I applaud those dads in Louisiana, and maybe we should have something like that every uh, on every campus, particularly where folks look like me <laughs> attend, because listen, uh, the way police police white kids is very different than how they handle our black children. And so while I think school resource officers have a role to play, we've also seen some that uh, don't seem to have the right temperament to be on these school campuses. I don't say no to anything. Parents certainly are the, the first line of, of offense, defense with these kids, and that means having a conversation at home and holding your children accountable and don't minimize and mitigate that bad behavior when you get a call from the principal. So what about protection then? If, if you're a teacher or a student and you come in involved in a situation with an active shooter, what should you do? Well, let's, let's talk about what you should do before that. If you see something, say something. These kids are all over social media talking about things that they may be uh, contemplating, thinking about, hearing. And so let's try to prevent a school shooting. And hopefully by now, every school has learned lessons from what we've seen in the past and have protocols and procedures in place. Follow those procedures and protocols and be mindful of what's going on in a classroom at all times. Well, how does this have an impact on the education process and, and how can teachers be effective if they're worrying about violence? You know, that, that's what we'll have to wait and see, right? I'm, I'm reading that many teachers are, are concerned about not only their own safety, but creating an environment that's conducive to learning. There's a lot of chatter from teachers about disrespectful children and how it seemed to have increased uh, since they've been off campus for so many months and or years. And so um, the teachers also need to be mindful and be proactive, be engaging, uh, have conversations with parents before the child acts out in a way that can cause harm to another student or another teacher. The Sergeant, before we let you go, I know that you're an author um, and you have a new book out that you wanted to tell us about. I have a new book, it's an autobiography, it's a biography, a true crime of a black anti-hero, Maverick Miles Nehemiah, who did the unthinkable. He went straight to the tap, didn't wait for reparations, took the US government for $20 million. The Confidence Chronicles, the greatest crime story never told. Sounds exciting, all right. Thanks for joining us, retired Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey. Appreciate you as always being with us here on BNC.